anticipation had been building for hours, but never more than now, as the red numerals on the countdown clock disappeared and the first synthesized notes vibrated. An image of an eagle in a fireball hovered above the stage. A neon red tunnel appeared, and eight towers of flames rose to the sky. Leaping from darkness into the glow, rapper Travis Scott emerged, the instant for which tens of thousands gathered before him had waited. In the thrill of the moment, clamoring for an idol, many pushed forward, thrusting revelers into revelers, closer and closer and closer, until it seemed every inch was swallowed. Then, fighting the compression or seeking escape, people pushed from the front to the back, and new ripples came with it. What followed last Friday in Houston is clouded by unanswered questions and strikingly different experiences based on where someone stood, which swells of movement reached them, and how they handled the crush. But in the 70 minutes the headliner was on stage in a show that left nine dead, one thing was certain, nearly everyone felt the waves of humanity, born of excitement, but soaked with risk, as they spread. You became an organism said 26-year-old Stephen Gutierrez of Ellenville, New York, who is 6 foot 2 and 391 pounds, but nonetheless found himself struck by the power of the pushes that sent him drifting from his spot. We're all one. You're moving with the crowd. The crowd's like water. It's like an ocean. The enthusiasm of some 50,000 spectators at the sold-out Astroworld Festival was evident from the time gates opened seven hours earlier, when some of the earliest arrivals rushed through entrances with such force that metal detectors were toppled as security guards and police on horseback struggled to keep up. Though the concert grounds hosted numerous acts, Scott, a Houston-born musician who founded the festival in 2018 on the heels of his chart-topping album Astroworld, was undoubtedly the top draw. Some fans made a beeline for the stage built solely for the headliner, staking out positions they would hold for hours under the manufactured peaks of Utopia Mountain. As afternoon turned to evening and the countdown clock appeared around 8.30 p.m. the crowd grew denser and denser, attendees said, and the first waves of motion began to ripple dot with five minutes left and latecomers pushing in. It tightened more dot in the final 30 seconds on the clock, the craggy peaks of the stage's mountain turned to a volcano, and when the moment came, the crowd chanted, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Scott appeared. The pushes grew stronger. The first shock waves of fear emerged. Eligio Garcia, 18, of Corpus Christi, Texas figures it was just 40 seconds into Scott's set that he looked at his girlfriend with concern. They felt heat swaddle their bodies. It became hard to breathe. Dot screams echoed, begging, please, help me. Behind him, people were falling. It looked to him like a human whirlpool. They felt the push and his left arm slipped away from her. In an instant, both found themselves tangled on the ground in a pile of bodies. They managed to get up, and Garcia said they screamed to nearby production staff for help, but got no response. Every way out seemed impossible, but they eventually made their way to safety. We gotta get out of here, he told his girlfriend. We can't fall back into this pit. Travis Scott's fans are dubbed regrers and are expected to be in constant motion at his show. The rapper, who dreamed of being a wrestler as a child and has said he wants his shows to resemble WWF matches, cheers chaos from the stage and stirs up frantic energy. He even has a gold necklace mimicking a street sign, a jewel-encrusted red circle with a person standing still, a diagonal red slash through the body. The message is clear, no bystanders at concerts. Reggers only dot and so the show continued. Scott had banging and shrieking, running through a quick succession of hits. Some experienced concert goers in the crowd grabbed whistles around their necks or shouted open it up, to trigger those around them to form mosh pits, circles that were the only voids in the jam-packed horde. Moshers shoved and heaved their bodies against one another in an aggressive ritual towing the line between dance and violence. Around mosh pits perimeter, 
circles of participants rotated and crowd surfers took flight. Moshers want their pits to grow as big as possible. Their outward push, combined with the rotations of participants, can create a swirl of motion that moves through the crowd. It was nothing new to many at the show. But, combined with the push toward the stage, others felt the crowd compress in ways they hadn't before. Billy Nasser, 24, of Indianapolis, noticed it a few songs in. His raised arms no longer had room to come down. People were falling. Some stepped on the lifeless body of a passed out man with his eyes rolled back in his head I had to let him go. It was every man for himself, Nasser said. And that was when I realized how bad it was because I literally had to drop him and no one else would help me. As flashpoints emerged in some places, the show went on. Lasers springing from the stage's tunnel made it look at times like a prism capturing a blaring Sunday some 5.30 Houston police officers were on the scene and their walkie-talkies crackled with a warning, don't leave your group. No fewer than 10 officers together. Danger looms. We're having some structural issues that could be catastrophic, a voice cautioned dot about 22 minutes into his set. Scott seemed to see something in the crowd make sure he good, he said. Walk with him. Take him. Around the same time, over police radio, a voice advised, folks are coming out of the crowd complaining of difficulty breathing, crushing type injuries. It seems like the crowd is compressing. The mass of people continued to tighten in spots, but escape paths remained. Kevin Perez, a 19-year-old from Davenport, Florida, saw a mosh pit collapse behind him and realized he no longer was controlling his own movement. His forearms felt bound to his chest, his hands clenched in fists near his neck. He tipped his chin toward the sky for shallow breaths. It went from like excited to scared, he said. People were trying to get out. Perez followed a snake of people cutting through the crowd. Others climbed barricades. In the hindsight of their escapes, the moments of this night would take new meaning. An opening song entitled Escape Plan. T shirts brandished with See You on the Other Side. A man in the crowd holding a white sign that asked, Will we survive? The situation appeared to be worsening, the waves growing stronger, the opportunities to break free fewer. It got to the point said 21-year-old Jason Rodriguez of Texas City, Texas, where nobody could move. Thank you for watching. Please, subscribe.